again. Super glad you all could come and attend and learn a little bit about um, Git and GitHub. To briefly introduce myself, my name is Rizal Scarlett. I am a developer advocate at GitHub, um, but I'll talk a little bit more about myself later on. Let me go ahead and share my screen. But I'm assuming, so I'm gonna just keep going. All right, cool. Uh, so again, this is a beginner's guide to Git and GitHub. Super excited to share this with y'all. Um, so I'll start with a quick story. Um, basically, there's so many new terms and technologies to learn in software engineering. Um, it, it, whether you're new or whether you've been in the engineering industry for a while, there's always something new coming up that people don't always know the answer to. Um, for me, uh, when I was in coding bootcamp, I did get confused with a couple terms. Um, one of them was Java and JavaScript. I thought they were the same thing. And then later on, I found out they're not the same thing. Um, and I also thought Git was short for GitHub. Um, and later on also found out they are two different things. So before I go into like how to use Git or GitHub, I do wanna explain the differences between both. Um, so, but, but I did want to add that just because you don't know something now doesn't mean that in the future you won't figure it out. Um, think about it. For me, I didn't know the difference between Git and GitHub at one point, and now I work at GitHub. So definitely write down that goal you have, speak it into existence. Um, you may think, oh man, I'll never be able to do this, but you definitely can if you put in the work. Um, and to introduce myself a little bit more, again, my name is Rizal. I'm a developer advocate at GitHub. I worked as a software engineer for approximately three years, and I focused a bit more on the front end and a little bit on serverless. Um, I'm also a program director at an organization called G Code House. Um, and G Code is basically an organization that teaches women of color and non binary people of color about web development and code. Um, I have a passion for empowering and educating people about tech, and I also um, I'm addicted to Twitter. So uh, if you want, you can follow me on social media at Black Girl Bytes on Twitter, hash node GitHub Dev.2, um, and soon to be on TikTok and YouTube, but definitely look out for me there because I'll have um, more similar content um, to help everyone level up. All right, so Git and GitHub, what is the difference? I told you they're not the same thing, but like, why, why aren't they the same thing and why are we using them? Basically, Git is a version control system. Um, that's what Git is, plain and simple, and you're probably like, okay, that's cool, but what is a version control system? And Basically, a version control system enables you to record snapshots of your projects as you save the changes you make throughout history. Um, so when I say that, I can, I can give you a bit more of an example here. Um, take Google Drive for an example. Um, in my Google Drive, I have a whole bunch of different versions of my resume saved in there. Um, as you can see on the side, it says, and like it says Bob Semple, that's my maiden name, Rizal Bob Semple's resume, copy of it. Um, this is um, a version of it in PDF format, um, Rizal's resume for, there's just so many different versions that I've written for different reasons. Um, some that I've written a long time ago so I can get scholarships for school, some for different software engineering roles, some for internships, some for developer advocacy, but if you can imagine, it's hard to keep track of. Why Why did I make these? I have no clue what the difference between um, Rizal's resume for and copy of Bob Semple Rizal resume is. Like, I don't know. I have to actually click on them and figure out which one it is. Um, so as you can see, this is already hard and you may be able to relate with me, but imagine it being even harder in a work in a code base that you're working in with multiple people and a very large code base. Um, so in that same vein, code bases also have different versions. Um, and here's examples of different versions of a code base, because you're probably, if you're not familiar and in diving into like a production or um, a company's code base, you might be like, what do you mean by that? So first you'll have the production um, version. 
And that's the version that users are currently interacting with on your site and they're seeing and they're touching. Then you'll have the staging version and that's the version that developers use if their code was um, the, basically, actually, let me talk about the local version first, then staging, because I think that'll make more sense, right? So you have production um, and maybe someone reports, a user reports that they see a bug um, in the code and or in the website and they need it to be fixed. So you pick up that ticket and you make a local copy of production, but this is your own local copy. That's your version. And basically on your version, you'll have a fixed um, working example of that bug. So you've added code to fix whatever that user complained about. And now you have your own local copy of the code that's different than the production code. Um, once that's fixed, you'll move it into staging. And that's a different version of a large code base. And staging is essentially where all developers may put their code for testing before they put it into production. So everyone will merge their different versions of um, the code base into staging and everyone will like start testing it out and see if anything's broken. Once that works, you'll put it into production. So there's already three different versions. There's so many other versions, but these are like the main ones that people will use in a code base. So you do have to at least keep track of these three things. Um, but if me managing my own resumes in a Google Drive by myself is difficult for me. Imagine how hard it is if it's a whole software engineering team on a code base with multiple different versions. That's hard. And that's why Git was made because it manages those versions for you um, so that you don't have to do it manually because it has um, enough um, information to basically decipher what's going on and help you visualize it as well. So basically, it'll tell you what the latest version of the code is, who made the specific changes, and why those changes are, were made. Okay, so where do you use Git? Um, you would use it in a terminal or a command prompt. For Mac users, it's called a terminal. For Windows users, it's called the command prompt. Um, and it looks a little scary, <laughs> but it's not. I, when I seen this, I was like, wow, this looks like the thing that people in movies are typing really quickly on. Um, but it's really not that old. Like, it can look scary, but if you take time to read what's going on, it's just printing out um, each step of what is happening in your computer, if there was an error. Um, and basically, people use the terminal to interact with their com computer. Um, but most of all, you can use Git in your terminal to manage the different versions of your code. Now that you understand Git, or at least you have a better understanding of it, what is GitHub? Understanding what the difference is there, I think is really important because I do see people using them interchangeably like I was in the past. So GitHub, um, as plain and simple, is a web-based platform for developers to store um, their code on the cloud. So it's basically just a website that you could store code on so that other people can be able to see it. Because with just using Git, your code will only be seen locally. So again, GitHub is a website that uses Git to show you all the changes that you made to your code. It's stored on the cloud to make it easy for you to share it with others. Back in the day, people were like using FTP or emailing their different changes so that they can um, keep track of that. But Git and GitHub really changed the game um, in being able to manage your code and visualize that and share your code. Um, so here's just a quick view of GitHub. And you all may already know this, but I'm, I try to make things pretty broken down for people who even have like zero knowledge of what's going on with Git and GitHub. So basically, you have a GitHub profile. I kind of think that GitHub slightly like a social network in some way for engineers. Maybe some people don't think of it that way, but you do have a profile, um, which most social media platforms do. And it'll say your name, where you're from, where you work, your email and stuff like that, what GitHub organizations you're a part of. And most importantly, it has um, all of your repositories. And if you're not familiar with that word, it just means your different projects that you've made, your different coding projects. So as you can see, I have a repository called Social Card Generator. And it's just 
Social Card Generator is my repository for a project that I have called Social Card Generator. It's just a project container. It's just a folder with different coding files in it. Um, and as you can see, I have like a git ignore file, a readme, a JavaScript file called generate social image.js, and a package.json. Um, so let's take a look at what files look like. If you click generate social image, you'll see this long file that I made with really bad code. I'm just like, I guess, um, asserting variables or giving variables different values. But yeah. Um, you go into file, you get to view it and what line it's on. Pretty straightforward here. Um, you can also get to see the changes in your code. Um, and those are called commits, right? So um, as you can see here on January 14th, I made a commit. Um, and I even got to, it even allows you to write a message on why you made that change um, so that people can have more context. So here it says I made a fix. I added a comment. Um, that adds a comment if a contributor assigns itself already. Um, you can see July 12th, uh, B. Dougie added something. July 10th, M.T. Foley added something. So basically, these are just showing like every time someone makes a change or a commit and who made it and why. Okay, and then alternatives to GitHub do exist. So GitHub is not the only area or place for you to store your code. Um, GitHub is just one of the most common. Over 73 million users use it. Um, you have GitLab, you have Bitbucket, you have Gitbucket, you have AWS Code Commit, and you have SourceForge. So those are different um, methods or ways for you to store your code. Um, I Just so people could know, because when I started my first job, I thought I was gonna be using GitHub because that's what I learned in my coding bootcamp and they opened up Bitbucket and I was like, what is this? I have no clue. So basically just be aware that these exist, but I am going to be mostly just teaching you about GitHub. So how can you even store your code on GitHub? That's what you guys are here for. That's what you guys want to get a better understanding of. Um, so the step, the first step is you want to create a GitHub account on github.com and you want to install Git on your terminal. So let's take a look at what that might look at like like this is a little dark but i hope you can see this is a screenshot of um, someone signing up for github and it'll ask for your email what password you want to use all that stuff on github.com and then this is a screenshot of a terminal um this is someone using ubuntu and they're doing sudo apps get install git the instructions may vary based on um what operating system you're using, right? So if you're using Mac, it may be a different install. Um, if you're using Windows, if you're using Ubuntu. But what's important is just looking up how do you install Git, and then you'll be able to get the instructions. All right. The next step is you would want to create a repository. Um, so I'm not going to like necessarily live code for real with y'all, um, because everyone has different um, what's the word? Everyone has different um, operating systems, but I do have screenshots in gr great detail. And then also you can go ahead and re-watch this recording when it comes out or look at the slides and you'll be able to follow it step by step. But you do want to create a repository. And like I mentioned already, that's the container on GitHub that's going to hold your project. Um, so um, at the top right hand corner of github.com, you'll see a button, a plus sign, and underneath that you can click new repository. Um, there you'll fill out the name of your project, you'll give it a description, and you'll say if you want it to be public or private. Um, so public meaning anyone on the internet can see it, private meaning you only want to see it, you're not ready for other people to see it yet. Or maybe um, it's private access for it. Um, and then also you want to follow the setup instructions from GitHub. So GitHub already gives you some instructions that you need to put in on the command line. Um, and for a long time, I had no clue what these meant. I just would copy and paste each step um, and it would create a repository or a project for me and it would put my code on there. And I was like, I don't know why I'm doing it, what it's for, but 
it's working. I think for now, if you're new and you're learning, that's fine because eventually you'll gain more context. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through it line by line and explain why we use certain things um, and what these different lines mean. So the first one says echo hashtag my first website. And then it has these like carrots readme.md looks pretty scary, but this is just saying it's going to create a readme file for your project, um, my first website, and inside of the readme, it's just going to have a bigger, a super big heading that says um, my first website, because that's the name, that's the name I gave for my project, if you didn't notice in step two, right here. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, so as you can see, here's a screenshot of what I meant. It created a readme. This is a markdown file. And people use readmes to give a description of what their project is about, why it exists. It kind of helps people get more attracted to the project and figure out how they can use it or how they can contribute to it or what it does. So basically, here's the readme. It doesn't have much inside of it because I just used the default instructions. But if I did want to edit it and add more, I could click the little pencil here and it would allow me to edit it. Also, you have git init. Um, and what this line means, after you copied and pasted the echo line, you'll also copy and paste git init. What this line means is it's just initializing or indicating that your project in your local folder on your computer will be using git. So you're essentially just telling your folder, um, hey, I'm going to use git, so keep, keep, keep up here, and we're going to be able to upload this to GitHub in a few all right, so here's a screenshot of my terminal, right? I CD'd or I navigated to my folder that had the code on it, and I typed git init. What showed up is a couple of information that says, like, what my branch name should be, like my default branch name, um, and it's suggesting that I make a branch, blah, blah, blah. So it was created and it's just suggesting that I create a branch. And maybe you're like, what's a branch? Um, it's essentially, uh, in sim the most simple terms, it's kind of another version of different um, code that you're making. So maybe um, you'll create a branch for fixing a bug or adding a new feature. It's just you branching off what the main version of the code is and kind of adding something new to it. Um, the next line would be git add, and then um, you would insert a file name. So you're adding the different files that are within your project to be pushed up to GitHub. Um, you can do git add dot, which adds all the files, but that is a little risky as sometimes um, you may have something that you didn't want to push up to GitHub, maybe like um, a, an API key, a file with an API key or environment variables that shouldn't be accessed by other people. So I do like to say git add and then line by line pick the files that I want to add. So for example, I'll do like git add index.js or something like that. After that, the next line on there is git commit dash m first commit. Like we talked about already, um, commits just show the different changes that happen to your code um, or saves the changes. So doing git commit saves that change at that moment in time. Um, and then the dash M will be where you insert a message of why you're saving that change or what this change is doing. And then, like I said, I already mentioned about git branch. Um, this enables you to name a version of your code so that you'll be able to be like, oh, yeah, this is when I fixed the bug where people couldn't log in. So you'll be like, get branch um, bug issue or something like that. And that's the name of your branch. Um, but here you're setting the, the main branch. Um, and that's like basically the default line that GitHub gives you. 
And then you have get remote ad origin. Um, so basically you're saying this is connecting your local code to the repository on GitHub because everything you've been doing so far has been local. You've added your files, you've committed or saved them, um, you've made a new branch, but now you want to be able to push it up to GitHub and you're saying, this is where I want it to go. This is the repository or project container that I want it to be in. Um, and you'll use that line. And then finally, you will push your code with the lines git push dash u origin main. It pushes all your changes, all the files that you wanted to add, everything to this repository from earlier. And that is basically it from the terminal. But if you don't feel ready for the terminal or it's just like not your favorite thing, um, you can use different alternatives. You can use GitHub Desktop and you can use GitHub's web UI to basically drag and drop files. You don't need to um, be digging deep into the terminal if that's not something you're familiar with. And even I was just talking to Matt Stratton from Pulumi who has years and years of experience. And he says he sometimes prefers um, UI tools to the terminal. So it doesn't matter about your experience level, do what works for you and figure out how you can get your files up to GitHub. And that is it. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me go back and stop sharing. Cool. I know this was very like beginner one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I didn't talk about like merge conflicts and stuff like that, but that's possibly something I could do in the future. Uh, someone said, can you go back a slide? Oh, I'm so sorry. You probably said that a while ago. Uh, yeah, let me share. Which, which slide do you want me to go back, RH? Oh, and I see some more questions. Just wanted to see Git Origin add and Git Push. Okay, yeah. Let me share my screen again. Huh. This is not sharing. <laughs> Let me see if I could... Hmm. <clears throat> Siddhar, I might need some help here because for some reason it's not sharing again. Um, oh, here we go. I don't know why this is happening to me. Um, but the kit, git push you origin main is the one you wanted to go back to. And the git remote at origin. If you guys want, I can do this live. I just figured... Um, it could be a little bit harder, but I can do that in a second after I look at the other questions. And if you're not sure what the different lines are, let me actually put the link to this slide here. And then I'll also let you know that you don't have to like, um, here it is, copy. You don't have to memorize these. I was just giving context because once you create a repository on GitHub, it will actually give you these different lines and you're just gonna copy and paste each of them into your terminal. So let me share this with you real quick. Or maybe you can add a git command, help me on your GitHub as public. What do you mean by that? Um, but I did put, I'm not sure what you mean. Go ahead and like, feel free to clarify, but I did put a link to the, to the Canva, um, slides here. So it says, can enterprises save their code on GitHub? Yes. Yeah. Get, um, companies can save their code on GitHub. Um, if you want to have the free version you can and if you want to have the paid version you can there is a thing called github enterprise which gives you access to a few more things like code spaces and all that is having a private repository the only option for them keeping their code hidden yeah i would say so um i would say like making the repository private is like the easiest way and you can just add 
collaborator collaborators on who you would want to get access to um to get access to the actual repository um yeah i don't know if there would be other options but i think that's like the best way um yeah and it you can do it even if you weren't an an, an enterprise which is one thing that did help github stand um apart from the other like source code areas um basically you can do it if you're like one person and you can do it if you're a whole enterprise um have noticed a pro tag on someone else's pro- GitHub profile. What's that about? I think that's a good question. So I think that's for GitHub stars and people who um, are basically ambassadors for GitHub or like super users for GitHub. So they all get access to some of GitHub's beta features a little bit earlier. And it'll also like, just help them to like get access to copilot faster or code spaces and stuff like that. Let me see. Someone actually replied. Oh, and GitHub student developer pack too. Not only them though, but basically people who have signed up for these pro- programs like GitHub campus experts, GitHub stars, they'll have more access to like new features. Let me see what other questions. No others. If not, I can Can you tell us more about the student developer pack? Um, sure. I don't, so just so you guys know, I don't work in GitHub education, so I don't know that much about it, but I believe if you have uh, an email address that ends with .edu, um, it'll give you access to a couple things. Like, let's go ahead and actually look at it together. GitHub student developer pack. Yeah, but if you sign up, you'll get ex- um, access to, like, different virtual events. Um, you'll get access to different tutorials, like intro to web dev and stuff like that. Um, you'll have, like, one year of, like, a free domain registration, access to Azure. So you basically get access to a whole bunch of stuff, front-end ma- masters for six months. Um, yeah, so if you did want to sign up, you could. I will drop it in the chat. I'll put it in the main chat. If y'all want, let's go ahead and um, actually do it from the terminal. Do y'all want to do that? And I'll check back frequently for any questions. Okay. Let's do it. So... I am going to go on GitHub and I'm going to create a new repository so that way you guys can follow along and I'm going to call the repository Aviel Demo and I'll give it a description. This repo is for Aviel Public. I'll create a repo. Cool. So I have a repo on my computer called Aviel Demo. Let's go ahead and on my local computer, I will create a project. Let me make it on my desktop because that's going to be most simple. Um, And I'll call it Aviel Demo. Let me know if you guys need this to be bigger and you can't see. Um, and in VS Code, I'm going to go ahead and open up the folder on my desktop called Aviel Demo. All right. And I'll wait for y'all to catch up if you want to for a little bit. Cool. That's enough silence for me. I'm going to create a new file um, and I'll just like put a random H1 in here because I'm not really building a website. So H1. Hello, Aviel. Save it. I'm going to save it as 
index.html. Okay, so to just give a recap on what I did, why I did it. First, I created a repository on github.com. I already have an account. And, and also, I created a local folder, um, and I added an HTML file there so I can have some code. Um, my goal is to be able to push this code up to GitHub. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and open my terminal. Let me make it super big for y'all to see it. Um, let me figure out where I am in my computer. So you can do that by typing ls. Um, then you'll have a list of all the folders that you have access to. So I'm going to go into my desktop because that's where the that's where the folder is. And if I do ls, I'll see Aviel demo. I'm going to cd into Aviel demo. And what I'm just going to do, which I think is simplest, is go ahead and just copy and paste those different instructions. So echo Aviel demo. This, again, creates a readme for me. After that, I'm going to do git init, which tells my um, project I'm going to start using GitHub or git. Um, then I'll add the readme and I'm also going to add, oh, actually, no, I'm going to add a file in here and let's remember what file we made. It was the index.html and the readme. So let's go ahead and do git add index.html and we can do git add readme.md. Uh, after that, let's go check the instructions again. And we're going to do git commit dash m. And it says first commit, but we can change up the commit message. And remember, this means that we're saving the, the moment in time that we made this change, the moment in time that we created it, index.html, that had the, um, the h1 hello avl in it. So I'm going to say uh, created an html file, something like that to help me remember why I did it and why that change was made. Um, and it lets me know that I did create it. There was two files changed. Um, one was changed in readme.md and one in index.html. And then the next step would be making a branch. So that branch is called main. And then the next step is git remote at origin, avl demo. I'm basically connecting it to this GitHub repository. I'll just copy and paste that. And the, the last thing is pushing it up. So I'm going to go ahead and I hate when Max do that. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and do git push dash u origin main, press enter. And there it is. If we go ahead and read it, um, it says a whole bunch of stuff. But basically, it's saying, hey, I created a new branch. Um, git is set to track everything on that remote branch. Um, and all these four objects were pushed up to github so let's refresh and there we have it we have our two files um hello aviel and we have a readme file so let me check back and see if you guys have any more questions hey nathan what's up let me know if you guys want me to repeat anything i know i went a little fast oh here we go yeah what's the major difference between git fetch and git pull that's actually a good question that I get confused about. So I'm actually going to just Google it with y'all. Um, and I think in the future I'll do like, um, if if Aviel will have me, I'll do like stuff on like merge conflicts, um, get fetch, rebasing and all that. Because I know those things are kind of hard. So, especially for me. So let's look up get fetch versus pull. Cool. So, because I don't use I don't use Git fetch that often, so it is a fair question. So basically, Git Kraken says Git fetch is a safer alternative because it pulls in all the commits from your remote, but doesn't make any changes to your local files. Um, on the other hand, Git pull is faster as you're performing multiple actions in one. Uh, okay, let me see. That doesn't give me that much information. In my opinion, how about in the future I do, if anyone in the chat actually has a better, like, clarified explanation of that, feel free to type it. But in the future, I can do, like, more stuff like get fetch, get pull, and all that. 
I just wanted to start with like the very basics. Yes, please. More in the future on get merged for conflicts in the resolution. Awesome. And I actually have dev.2 GitHub. I have a blog post on resolving merge conflicts that can help you in the meantime. Anything else? Any other questions about getting GitHub that I can answer? Um, I'm happy to answer them. Any, even any random questions that you all have. I also do know Git Fetch pulls a measure down to see if there's a difference between local and remote versions. I haven't used pull, only push. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I don't use Git Fetch that often. Maybe because I'm like lazy. <laughs> but I mostly use Git pull. Um, I know for for people who are listening and maybe you never used Git pull before by any chance. Um, basically, and you don't know what it's for. Basically. Um, if someone makes a change on on a project and they push it up and it's reflected on github.com, you don't necessarily have that change locally. Um, so you have to do git pull to pull in all those changes um, and basically have an up-to-date version of the code. And that's also where merge conflicts could come in. And I could talk a little bit about... Um, why merge conflicts happen and how you can resolve them. I can give you all a little summary of the blog post, actually. So basically, merge conflicts happen because two people are making a change to the same line of code or to the same file. Like maybe one person deleted a file while someone added a, a line of code to it. Um, basically, Git is confused on like what it should do because both people change that same line of code or they one person deleted that file and another person kept it. So it gets like, I don't know what to do here. You need to help me out. Um, but basically, also, um, in Visual Studio Code, it will tell you, it will like visualize where the like conflict is happening and it'll be like highlighted in colors. Um, in this picture, it's green and blue. In mine, it's like usually pink because that's the theme I have. But you'll see something called current change and you'll also see something called incoming change. And what current change means, I used to get so like overwhelmed when I would see this and unsure on like why I was going to make that change or like which one I should accept. But current change is just the changes that you made on your local branch and incoming change is just the changes that somebody else made on your team. Um so you just have to decide between like is my change the actual up to date one or is my coworkers change the one that needs to be added or should I accept both changes? Um, and in deciding that, it can be a little hard to figure out how to decide that. But my top suggestion is just talking to your coworker. Like software engineering is all about um, communication. So you can just be like, hey, I'm, I need some help trying to figure out which change I should accept. Why did you make this change? What's going on here? Um, if you don't have time to talk to them, sometimes I try to like test it out. So I'll like accept one change or I'll accept their change or my change or I'll accept both. And then I'll test out um, the code and see if I broke anything by doing that. Um, that usually helps me determine it. Um, but yeah, I, I think get merge conflicts seem much scarier than they actually are, um, but they're really not. Oh, and I thought I was sharing my screen, but apparently I wasn't. All right, I think I will wrap it up. Is that okay, Siddharth, if other people don't have any questions? It's kind of quiet. <laughs> but yeah, if a lot of people don't have any more questions, let me just see the chat again. Yeah, let's let's wrap it up and I'll do another talk in the future that like dives deeper into Git. Thank you so much. I hope this was helpful for you all. I know it was like pretty beginner, um, but Sometimes people do need beginner help with Git and GitHub. Alrighty. Cool. Bye, everyone.